So in this video right now, I'll be talking about how can you get your first web developer job faster in one month. And the way I'm going to talk about those tips right now are the tips that I personally used in order for me to get my first junior developer job five years ago. And to be honest, I didn't use all seven tips of them. I used actually about four of them. And uh, if I were to use all of those uh, tips, I would have actually received a lot more offers, I feel like. But the fact that I already got like a couple within that month was already a win. So let's get down to business with the first tip. So let's start with the most simple one. Number one is to have a portfolio portfolio. Now, to be honest, when I was applying for my first junior developer job, I did not have that portfolio, meaning that I didn't have a website. Uh, I didn't have uh, anything, any social media profile at that time. So, uh, but since a lot of people today uh, need to stand out, since there are a lot more uh, people who are applying for jobs, uh, everyone goes that extra mile, I start to believe that today you do need to have that portfolio. It doesn't matter how good it is, but again, you don't want to make it look bad in terms of like it's hard to navigate, it doesn't look good, and just missing a lot of information. So you want to make sure that it's clean, uh, minimalistic, uh, you don't have any uh, tab errors on your portfolio. Um, and if you do need some any other tips on that, I do have a video. I take a look into the description below, I'll leave a link to it. So the tip number two is to have uh, publicly available projects on your GitHub account. Uh, at my time, when I was applying for my first junior developer job, I had two projects available. Number one was very, very small, just had to do with the front end uh, type of uh, uh, technologies. And the, the project number two was a full stack uh, project that had uh, a lot more complexity involved, so it was a lot bigger. But having those online projects, is that is something that can help you uh, to show while you're in an interview, uh, to talk about it. And uh, whenever you will be making those projects, uh, try to tell them specifically to the job you're applying for. Uh, so right now I'm making video for uh, web developers, but you could be applying for specifically front-end, uh, back-end, full-stack position. And when you're doing that, make sure that whatever project that you are posting, well, you can post pretty much any project you want, but make sure that it's clear to what is the position you're applying for, because the clearer you can get, uh, the higher of your chances you have. Tip number three, optimize your LinkedIn profile to help your careers to find you faster. And uh, what that means is that uh, there is an about section, and within that section, try to uh, help them to understand uh, what is it that you're trying to uh, look for, or what is it you're trying to improve on uh, yourself technically, or where do you see yourself going, uh, heading down the line in five years, for example. And uh, whenever they'll be reading your profile, they need to have a, a clearer picture of what is it that you are uh, providing right? And uh, for recruiters, the way it works actually is they do have a, a list of technologies that uh, they need to uh, find the candidate for. So the more of those technical things you have within your LinkedIn, the better. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to have uh, React, Vue, Angular, and a bunch of, bunch of other different frameworks out there. You need to be very specific on what it is that uh, your profession in or what is that you already know. And uh, whenever you'll be building out those projects, you can, of course, include them into your LinkedIn and talk about those projects, talk about what is that you have developed, uh, what problem was it solving, what techniques you were using, because uh, a recruiter may not know what uh, you did in terms of technicality, but whenever they see that, uh, I see th that this person used React.js to develop this front-end application, okay, and uh, I see that he, uh, he or she have developed multiple of those projects, the chances of them replying back to you right now are much higher or in your favor. And uh, the tip number four that I would recommend is to attend the hackathons if you haven't done so. And there are multiple reasons why that's a good idea. The main reason why you want to do that is because a lot of people that go there, they are professionals who are currently in the industry. And for them, the reason why they attend is because, well, they love it. And number two, they could be also looking for other developers for the current open position within their company. So as you make 
contacts with people. Uh, maybe they can help you to work with it, uh, with them within their company. But if not, you just made a lot of great contacts because for a lot of self-taught developers, it's very, very difficult to find people uh, who are within industry because you didn't go to a college or let's say you didn't go to a bootcamp. You didn't make those connections. And that is something that you wanna do. You wanna have those connections for your LinkedIn, just for you in general, because connections do help uh, to find a job. And that is something that you do wanna keep in mind. Tip number five, you need to prepare for your interview. But when it comes to uh, interview overall, it has three steps. Like uh, first you have a screening where you're just talking to a recruiter. Uh, second is uh, you'll be having a technical code challenge that you have to uh, pass. And the last one is just a behavior uh, interview. And uh, it goes a lot more in depth on how it works. Uh, and that's what I'll be talking about in my next video. But, but of course, when it comes to preparing for an interview, you do need to have a resume. And uh, I do have a video on that as well, where uh, I do have a really terrible resume that I used five years ago. And uh, within that resume, I didn't have my GitHub account. Uh, I didn't have my portfolio. And yet I was still able to land my first junior developer job. So if you like, you can take a look at that video. Uh, but that is something that you do need to clean up and make sure that it's very, very clear on what is it you're applying for. Number six, while you're waiting on the recruiters to get back to you, uh, try to upskill your skills. So you have built out your projects in the past. That's great. Now try to find some sort of uh, not-for-profit uh, organizations where you can actually build uh, projects uh, for them. You're not going to be getting paid for that. However, you're building a production ready uh, code for people to use. Now, that is something that can definitely help you because when you'll be on an interview, um, you can talk about that and, and you have worked on the projects that are currently being used by other people right now. Uh, tip number seven, the last step, and that is keep on repeating what you have done previously. So in my case, for example, when I was looking for my first junior developer job, I'll be actually applying to 10 jobs a day. So like I'll apply 10 jobs today, I'll apply to 10 jobs tomorrow. And within first 10 days, I have applied to 100 jobs. Now, I'll get a rejection, that's not a problem, and I do get acceptance, awesome. But if you get rejected, ask them a question of why were you rejected? Uh, was it because you were missing something, or is it something that uh, you did wrong, uh, or is it the culture fit? And if it's a, a culture fit, that was the reason why you were not accepted in the first place. Uh, to be honest, that is something that I'm personally happy about it, because uh, if I was not accepted for that, that means that me as a developer, or personally, I will not be able to work with that team. And that is very important for your uh, health, mental health. Um, now, for a lot of junior developers, if you're just trying to get your first job, uh, that might be not as important because, hey, Artem, I'm just trying to get my first job. So uh, that might be not applied to you right now, but uh, later down the line, you'll notice that after six months, one year, uh, you'll try to find a job that is a little bit more personally uh, better to you. And thanks for stopping by the way. Those were my seven tips that helped me to find my first uh, junior developer job in one month, by the way. Uh, and I hope that those things will help you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you got the value. And within my next upcoming videos, I'll be talking about how can you ace the interview. I'll be talking about each of the steps uh, of the interview. So don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, not to miss that video, and I'll see you in the next video.